Hello everyone, my name is Itamar from Jerusalem uh, and we are meeting our friend Francis from Vienna uh, today and uh, we're going to talk more with uh, virtual guides around the world. Uh, we did, uh, we met um, Apostolis uh, from Macedonia last time and uh, today we have our friend Francis, I must say uh, my uh, baby boy is right here. So um, I hope he won't interrupt and intervene in the conversation. He probably has a lot to say. So if you hear him, uh, Francis, I expect that you understand his baby language and respond, uh, which is great. So yes, welcome, Francis. That's great. Thank you. So you have two interviews huh, at the same time. Exactly. We have, uh, we have commentator over, over here. Yeah, very good. Uh, I like that. Yeah, so uh, I... Wait, wait. Okay, should work just fine. Yeah, so... Um, Francis, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm in Vienna, I'm in Austria, but officially I was born in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. Tell us, tell us, um, who are you? Uh, what do you do? What, well, how was your life until March of 2020? Okay, my life yeah. is always great. My life is always awesome. I always do something with my life. So the pandemic was actually very good for me because I had to study a lot. And officially I did my tour guide license. I'm in this company, actually company, I'm in this tourist industry for over 37 years. I started already when I was 18. I traveled to Los Angeles, was there a tour guide in Las Vegas, Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York, Boston, worked there for 10 years. Also learned my <laughs> English over there. Then always moved back to Vienna. My mom lived here at the time. And then I moved to the Philippines, also tour guiding, also driver. Then I moved to Mexico, also tour guiding, also driving. I went back and forth to Europe. So I saw the Berlin Wall fall. I saw the communist end in 89. I was right there in Hungary, in Budapest. I do Budapest already for about 25 years. So Prague Beautiful. and Bucharest and Sofia and all over Europe here. And the last 20 years are actually driving around Europe. So I'm the one tour guide that you can find too many in Europe. It's the one that can drive, know the place, know a few languages, and can talk to the people at the same time. Yeah. Multitasking. Okay. Fantastic. What languages yeah. do you speak, by the way? I speak officially German. This was officially, let's say, my second language, but I learned it very well in, in school here in Vienna. Then, actually, my mom always wants to talk Portuguese with me at home. It was terrible because sometimes I was very hungry, hungry and I said to her, give me some food in German. And she said, no, Portuguese only. So I hate it, but today I understand, you know, and because I lived in Mexico and in Spain, so I, I had a little bit of Spanish, Spanish influence, okay, and English I learned in the state. So four good languages, cursing in about other seven languages. <laughs> Which the is words, you quite important when you first. cruise around and you have to... <laughs> yes, always, always, you know, but let's, this is for another time. Yeah, when you stop in a traffic light and there's always someone... Of course, yes, international <laughs> is no problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah so uh really this is uh, like you said i think uh, you mentioned it's quite unusual to have uh, in europe a guy that is uh, also a driver and able to guide in many many different places like in israel it's very common like um, many of like i know hundreds probably there are uh, uh, more than just hundreds of guides uh, that do that that guide and uh, they're called most uh, all the guides in Israel are basically qualified to guide all over the country. Yes, they also but, speak um, all the languages, no? yeah. Uh, but of, if but if you have a, a like a taxi driver license, you're also allowed to drive the tourists. So in Israel, it's very very common. So tell us maybe a little bit about how it goes in uh, in Europe uh, in terms of you know the legacy tourism, driving and guiding. Like uh, how usually it goes. Yeah, usually, usually what, what most agency does, and also a lot of tour guides, some of them are sometimes very upset that I go into their territory. But mm. sometimes I actually tell some clients, I don't know the area very well, or if they want to mm. go to any museums, like they want to go to the Louvre, if they want to go to Office Museum in Florence, I tell them I cannot guide there, I cannot just explain, it's not my territory. So I have my connection that I actually call officially guides from the city and they go particular museum or they go particular city. For my kind is actually not officially guiding. I'm actually more like a companion. So mm. I am a professional driver that will drive, will translate, know the places, know the area and I point some places out. Uh, so that's the little detail. 
sometimes like I have some some colleagues in in in, in Budapest, some colleagues in Prague, some colleagues in Ljubljana, some colleagues in in, in Venice, some colleagues in in Munich in Germany. So also in, in Switzerland, they get sometimes a little upset because I drive there. But most people don't understand the cake. It's big, really, for everyone. And big enough, for eh? sure, for sure, I can imagine if someone can drive and talk and also speak with the people at the same time, he will try to sell himself, you know, because it. always on the end, it's always because of the money amount. No? So yeah. most companies, what they do, they hire one driver and they hire one guide. Sometimes the driver is more expensive than the guide because the driver has the car, the car and the expenses and all that legal has waiting time, lunch time and whatever, you know, the guide sometimes only for a couple of hours and the guy, because the guide is local, he lives in the place. So he can charge less, no hotels, no meal, no lunch. If it's not really a full day tour. So if it's rather three, four hours walking tour, the guide lives there. And so I try to do less with the same idea. So I try to explain, I'm not officially guide outside Austria, but I know the place very well. If they want a guide, they can have the guide and pay extra for two or three hours, but I'm just a driver and it works out fine. You know? Fantastic. Also, so my baby is starting to ask uh, something about uh, the virtual tourism. He was, like, he's already curious about uh, virtual tourism. So maybe tell us, how do you get into virtual tourism Which will do us probably about six or seven years ago, I made some contacts with some travel agents in Brazil and they found out there's nice pictures from hotels are not that what the clients tell them because usually they book hotels and they show them some rooms from the internet or some brochures the hotel has. And then the client goes there thinking about, okay, I will have this beautiful two Uh, big beds in my room and then when they go to the room they have a teeny room maybe just a not with a queen size like a little bit smaller than a queen size and they get of course upset you know so some companies approach me and tell me ah you are in Vienna can you go to the hotels and take some pictures and film and I came with the idea that was a long time ago the very famous Skype I told sure if you are online I have internet connection so I can go on Skype and you can see the room right away you know that's I great can open the, the 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 windows i can open the balcony i can show you everything and the curiosity for us brazilians people don't like a lot of carpet in brazil <laughs> we think it's very dirty you know so you can you can actually go around and and clean it and because in our country it's too hot so we always like some tiles some ceramics you know yeah. some wood floor That's typical for South America. We don't have carpets. Carpets, know? yeah. So here, most hotels in, in Austria, they are with carpets because of the cold. So it's very cold here. So people don't like it. And I like, I, I, I got a lot of information to show the hotels. They don't have any carpet at all. And that's why I started my <laughs> virtual tours. So that's your virtual, virtual, your first virtual hotel. tours. <laughs> it's more of like a state kind of uh, experience. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes also because I wanted to have some, 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 Uh, viewers at my YouTube channel, I put some videos on a YouTube channel, tell them, look, this hotel look like this, this hotel look like that, that hotel is this price and that price, depending on season, depending on time, and people love it. And mostly travel agents get to me and say, can you show a little bit from the city? Can you, show, can you drive around? And that started the unofficially virtual tours. You know? So and like companies... mentally, mentally you were prepared for COVID, right? Like you already had That mindset of, you know, giving... Actually, for, me, yeah. for me, my personality is always having a plan B and C. Beautiful. Okay? So if it comes COVID, if it comes an earthquake, if it comes whatever it comes, you know? So if there is the end of the world, I know where to run, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how, they, like, say, they, say, they say around the world, you know, that if the end of the world comes, everybody should go to Vienna because Vienna is always late in everything, you know? <laughs> So the end of the world is going to be three weeks later, you know? <laughs> so you know it, Mike. If the end of the world comes, you come to Vienna. You know? Yeah, well, the Messiah will come from Jerusalem, and I'll keep you posted. You know, I'll just WhatsApp yeah, okay, you. Okay, and... they started over there, so... <laughs> Yeah, so, um, but let's go back to, you know, March and April of uh, 2020. Oh, the pandemic starts, and, you know, your 
what did you do, for example, with your car? What did you do with your yes, business? I was, I, was, I was very busy and actually uh, the car, it's not my car. I yeah. work with a taxi company where I work for and I have a very good boss. He tells me, I give you a salary and whatever you make money, you know, it's good for you, good for me. So if you Fantastic. don't drive, you don't get any money and the salary will be less. Yes. If you drive a lot, you make a lot of money. I make a lot of money. So that's the deal with us. And I always keep the same car all the time. Mm. And every three years, they change the car and get me a new car. What is great for the client, good for me. You know, it's a leasing system. So it's Yeah, but so here. what car is that now and how many seats? I, I have a Mercedes Benz, a Vito. Yeah. It's an eight-seater with it's a it. huge big trunk. Because Beautiful, Brazilian yeah. usually, one Brazilian have 10 luggage. So I need <laughs> sometimes a truck, you know. <laughs> I, I'm glad, I'm glad all this low low fare company arrived with no luggage at all and you have to pay extra yes for low, luggage. yes so people now <laughs> they're driving less but i still have some clients you know uh first class business class can they still use two luggage and each one 32 kilos you know so it's heavy stuff heavy stuff so okay when, but when the pandemic like, arrived yeah when the pandemic arrived the company closed mm. so i had no job at all the the, the boss said sorry I have to leave everybody because he has more than 50 drivers. Yeah. Everything was closed. Nobody was looking for any kind of Uber app or, or taxi driver. Yeah. So it was really, you know, zero. The good thing is in Austria is that the government helped those companies. Yeah. They so give if them they have a... some, some kind of jobs, they and have to oh. put the people so they go off, but they get also a little salary. Or sometimes, like me, I was unemployed, but I pay here in Austria unemployment tax. Mm -hmm. So I get money from the government. So not a lot of money, but it paid the rent, it paid the bills, it paid everything what I needed. You know? Yeah. So, and then you had and, time and to thought, think. What, what, what can I do? <laughs> and I had always this little problem, not only with the guides outside of Austria, I also had a problem with the guides in Austria because ah. I was for a long time a taxi driver. And I have all this nice connection with the five star hotels. Yes. So they told me, look, we're going to charge a lot of money. You have to be very nice. Those clients, they're VIP, they're singer, they're politician, they're business people. They stay here. So if you can go to a place, don't sit inside the car and tell them, look, over there, go. Yeah, like do, go the go extra with mile. Them. Yeah. Go with them. You know? So I went with them. But the problem here in Austria is as soon as I step out the car, I mm -hmm. will have problem because I'm not officially guide. I'm just a taxi. Ah, I see. I so see. inside the car, I can tell whatever I want. <laughs> Outside the car, I need a permission. So I never had a permission. So a lot of people actually called the police and gave wow. me some, some tickets, you know, because the guides, they cannot ask you for your ID, but they can call the police and say, I think that guy, it's illegal. Yeah. You know, I know him, you know. His boldness here, you see from far away. So people know me already here. And like you hear, I cannot talk too quietly. You know, I have to talk like Italian. So that's the reason people know me already, you know. So I had a lot of problems. And when Corona came, the, the government said the ones that had a job and now the unemployment, if they want, they can go back to school and learn something. Yes. You know? Video, so you got your permit. And video calls and Zoom calls. So I said, okay, why not? Let's try this guiding. And when the first months, when I had the first school was for one year, one year, you know? So the first months I said, no way, no way. Impossible, impossible to get all this history, impossible to get all this detail because here the guide has to go to certain school yeah. and he's actually getting a test by the government. Yeah, it's same in Israel. School, yeah. You know, like a driver license that I say, okay, good. I, I know what you mean, you know, mm -hmm. you go through, you know, yeah. you have to know the exact. And here, same goes here, actually, I said, it's very difficult for me, but I tried to learn because I, I knew the basics already and mm -hmm. I have luck. My clients, mostly Americans, Canadian, Australians, South Americans, they are not really into names and dates. And in Brazil, everything started around the 1500, 1600. So when, when, when we talk about some family from the 11th century, 12th century, South American has no idea about European history. So for me, it was always get the little detail, education a little bit and tell them what they made. And it was quite fun. So 
I tried to learn more deep into that. I passed, go thank first time, you know. So it was, I was very, very lucky. And says them, I have my 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 uh, guide. So this ID. is like a permission, a permit in Vienna, and it, it, no, it's a permit for all Austria. Yes, Austria, by the government. Yeah. Yes, yes, you're licensed to guide. That's yeah. why here they said if you're a guide, you don't have to by law. Mm. But it's nice when you show your badge. Mm. So people know that you are a guide and yep. they don't will not say, oh, I don't know this guy, he may be legal, you know. <laughs> so, but I'm always okay with that because I always give a lot of jobs. I'm a one-man band. And when some customers that I have clients, they never come only to Vienna. They do like a small European tour yeah. because we are three hours away from Prague. We yeah. are two and a half hours away from Budapest. We are four hours from Ljubljana. We are about one hour from Bratislava, four hours to Munich. So you can do in about one week a lot of countries and 100%. capitals, you know. So an easy drive also around here. So that's why I'm specializing all over Europe. Now, now take me and uh, Tavor is also uh, wondering, like, when did you purchase your first gimbal? My gimbal I purchased was a very old classic gimbal. I think it was around 2015, 2016. Okay. Yes, very expensive. For the for the hotel thing, for the hotel thing, yes, yes, yeah. because they, they, I, I tried by hand, you know. But even though I hold the, the camera and say it's not shaking, on the other side they know it was shaking. So mm. I got already a few experience with some gimbals, some microphone, you know. Now I have a Bluetooth microphone, you know. When I started, I say, oh my God, I wish I could have that, you know, yeah. because I have a small cable. So I hold to the gimbal, yeah. I hold like this, and when I put the gimbal to the front, <laughs> you know. Look, people, you know, <laughs> look up. You know, and it was like, you know, this, this guy. And it was not, not long a cable. There was, it didn't exist at the time. You know? I thought to myself, who is doing a gimbal and a microphone with such a cable? You know, doesn't make any sense. But it's okay. You know, one microphone, one company, the gimbal, a different company. You know? That's, That's okay, great. You know? But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. okay, so you got your permit. Now we're probably at the end of uh, 2020, probably at the beginning of 2021. And yes. like, walk us through, like, uh, how was your transition from, okay, you were you had the experience with the gimbal, you already knew how to broadcast and stream live and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you transition that into the virtual tours that you gave, uh, I think, the, at least virtual tours more than a year, a year and a half probably? Because because most company they actually look some YouTube, some Instagram, some Facebook, and they see what the guide is doing. Yeah. And my my YouTube channel, especially the one in Portuguese, because the English one is new. So mm -hmm. especially the one in Portuguese was a lot of information and short information. And most of the companies, when they contact me and they know me about YouTube, I'm not the influencer. I don't have too many followers, but people always get to my page to get some information. So they see me in Venice, they see me in Budapest, they see me in Prague, they see me driving around and walking around. So they say, this guy know his stuff, you know, let's contact him. So many companies ask me to do tours outside Austria. And I say, no, I cannot drive just to, to Switzerland to do a tour. If you pay yeah. me well, I will do it, you know, but just a little amount, I can't. But I have contacts there and I can bring people from there, you know. And sometimes also I teach some some tour guides, some little marketing ideas, you know. Yeah, and where clients. is the best schnitzel and where is the best uh, apple strudel? No, not about the schnitzel, <laughs> not about the apple strudel. No, 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 that's 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 not really, you know. I I, I tell them, you know, how to behave with clients, yeah, yeah, no, how to do the marketing with the clients, you know, with the camera and little things, little things, you know. That's right. Because, uh, it's, it's going up, this virtual industry is going up. And I see a lot of potential also for other things, you yeah, know, not I only do. for the for the tourism, also other things. You know, we see you can you can do a lot of things that have to do with, with tourism on which will tours. So take us to you know one of the first most memorable tours, virtual tours that you gave. Like not necessarily the first one, but you know, one of those first ones that are is actually memorable when you said, Wow, Francis, you're really nailing it, you know how to give a, you know, a virtual yeah, experience yeah, yeah. of the, yeah, the first big ones, because usually my tour is about one hour, one yeah. and a half hours around Old Town. Mm -hmm. So I show and I always have something interesting to tell, I always something, uh, little details to tell. But the people sometimes, they're always a small little group that likes Vienna, been to Vienna, or the ones they want to come to Vienna. But mm -hmm. one time, this was last year, I had idea because I was not traveling anywhere because of COVID. So I had the idea to do the virtual tour on the 31st of December mm. and do it from 11 o'clock at night 
till after midnight. So I gotta yeah. celebrate with the people. And fireworks I and everything. There were fireworks. Excuse me. Yes, fireworks and everything. There was no officially fireworks in Vienna, but people brought fireworks into the street. Oh yeah. And we have one one main square where everybody meets. You mm -hmm. know, and and I I usually have around thirty to fifty people on my tour. You know. On the that time, more than 800. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> yes. And, and, and I made the room open for 1,000. You know? Yeah, so we're and talking about today. The... People came in because they celebrated already before. Yeah. They wanted to see how is Vienna. And other ones, they want to celebrate later other countries. So they did like the run. And many tour guides didn't have the idea to do that. So I was one of the few that did the midnight show yeah. in Vienna. And I bought a little... Prosecco bottle, you know, and open with them, I celebrate with people. Ah, so it was good. amazing, amazing. <laughs> and and from this 800, about 10 people later on, January, February, March, they came to Vienna, ah. you know, because they saw. And that's for me really great when you do a tour and people come back because you show them the St. Stephen and they say, oh, it's great church. I want to come and see it myself with you, you know, and yeah. that's the best. That's the best, you know. Yeah, I think you're really touching the, you know, the, you give me the segue to the next question, you know, uh, the transition between the virtual experience that we're, we're giving for the last uh, two years or so uh, to the legacy tourism, you know, the in-person tours that we were giving. So now that uh, I would say COVID is almost over or, you know, practically yes. over oh. for most people, I guess, unless they are really have some health conditions, um, like, uh, what do you say, like, what's the place of virtual tourism uh, in your life now? And uh, what do you think the future of it? I think uh, it helped me a lot, virtual tours, to show really details for lots of people. Uh, I Most of the company I work with actually like a room that people join and they can see that, okay? I did it maybe once or twice a month. I have someone from some companies, they approach me because I do a lot of marketing with my uh, YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and everything else. So they approach me and say, ah, I saw your tour. Can I have a private tour? Because my mom likes Vienna. My mom went to Vienna. She cannot travel anymore, but I want one-on-one. I yeah. want to ask you a question and not 10 people exactly. asking questions, you know? And, and I try to sell this. Every time I do a tour and I tell some colleagues and I miss that, a few colleagues, because some colleagues, I will say 80%, they see the virtual tour like a regular tour. Yeah. You do the tour, bye-bye, kiss, come back, mm. and see you later. And they don't keep the contact, you know? And I'm the one that actually keep the contact before, during, and most important, after the tour. And most of my clients, they, they call me or they, they send me WhatsApp and say, oh, I'm a friend of John. And I say, excuse me, which John? <laughs> There's so many Johns. Oh, three months ago, he saw you live streaming in Vienna going to the street. <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't remember. You know, but what do you want? Oh, I want to come to Vienna. I want to ask if you have time. And then we're talking, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know? And then maybe after that, you know, I'm doing a tour and then Johns appear. And he says, oh, I'm John. Did you talk to Steve? Steve yeah. is my friend. <laughs> ah, you are the John. Oh, thank you very much. You know, so <laughs> that's the connection that I miss with a lot of colleagues. Yes. Because a lot of colleagues complain a lot about how great it is, but the people don't come back. Or sometimes the people see one tour because most of the guides do one round. And on that round, they always tell the same story. Yeah. So people don't do the second and third time. And with me and also, of course, other guides, we try to exchange. So yeah. we say something during the round, we look on the right-hand side. And the next time, we just look on the left-hand side. And the next time, we look right and left and left and right, and we change. Yeah. You know? And that's the great That's the great thing about it. That's why people want to come to Vienna, because I, it's not easy when you have people behind the screen, you know, and you want to show them something and they have to get the feeling to be there with you, you know? I agree. And that's, I have this, this, this talent. That it's a talent, I yeah, 100%. People. That's, that's exactly right. Detail, you know, do you see this little wink here? This is the story. And I tell them the story. I touch history that most people cannot do that around the world. So it's really interesting and people want to come. You know, I, I, want, I wanted to ask you, you know, on what you just said, um, I, I feel like the virtual tours 
made me much better guide you know yes. The, yes. the tours that I give from home the tours that I give from uh, from uh, from like live on location on the streets of Jerusalem I feel like I have much much better understanding of yes. uh, of of you know my own city much better understanding of how the social media works and how to bring that content into social media including the virtual tours which has Correct. some social media aspect to it so what's your take on it like how did you how do you feel like it's improving your uh, you know for me, skills? For me because I I do differently the virtual tours than I do a live tour because live tour I can see the people eyes and I know yeah. if they're interesting or not so if I tell something look at the church on the right hand side and I see those couple are looking left hand side because they're not religious but they want to have a respect for the guy they want to don't complain and say look come on Francis let's hurry up nobody says that you know so they're very polite every <laughs> yes. people is very polite you know so but you can see on the eyes the expression on the video I cannot you know, so I always try to give some stories about some monuments, about who built the monument, who did the monument, why the monument stays here, or who is the singer, who is the composer, you know, and I try to figure out stories, and there are some monuments in Vienna, I knew who built that monument, and I know who's there, but then the little details, what is made of, when it was made, where did he made, how was the transportation from that place that uh, artists did to that location? There was no truck. There was no trucks, you know. So he had to move around, you know. And then I tried to. What did he out. eat during the career? <laughs> during... Yes, it's amazing. It's amazing, you know. People, people, you know, it's, it's amazing. We have here a museum with a lot of cannons from the Napoleon War. Yeah. And I always mention to my people, look, there are some cannons from the Nap Napoleon War. Yeah. Okay, great, fantastic. During the video tour, you know, I ask myself, how the cannons come up here, you know, and then I go to the museum and ask them, you know, how did it come? So you, Where was it made? you have your and ongoing research as you and do I got that. a lot of information about this yeah. cannon. So when I go there, I say, look, look at this cannon. They are about 1.5 tons. Imagine Massive. transport them yeah. with some horse carriage, you know, they had to build a special carriage for one Cannon cannon. Only, yeah. you know and then people think and they, they like the story you know most 100%. people like 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 my tours you know <laughs> it goes into little details yeah no i agree not, these are the details that make uh, life what it is yeah. So, you know, uh, uh, I live in Jerusalem, but the, the picture I, I chose for this interview is actually of Jaffa. You can see the Mediterranean over here okay, and uh, nice. St. Peter's Church up here. And the reason I chose this, it's because this is the port where Herzl uh, from Vienna uh, yeah. came to the land of Israel. And we had yeah. this beautiful experience back in March uh, when we give uh, the university in Salzburg and uh, the academic um, center in Ashkelon a little tour about uh, Herzl. And uh, we started in Vienna and we ended up here in Jerusalem. Great. It was a great was experience. Great. Yes. Um, so, you know, um, I think you have the concept uh, of uh, cross-border experiences, you know, you, you, because of what it's you do point. in person and because of, you know, well, what you do virtually and how open-minded you are in, in this term. And, you know, you, you immediately, you know, you're we very uh, positive about this uh, experience that I want to, yes. to give the, 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 the group. Um, so what do you think about these, this idea of ex virtual experiences that basically you cannot experience in person, meaning... You can't really do all the Silk Road. I mean, unless mm -hmm. you have tons of money and you have three, four yeah. months, you know, open. You, you, yeah. well, no one is really doing that. You know, in some of the places, actually dangerous, maybe, um, or you don't have the visas for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So, how do you see the cross-border experiences, you know, in the future? You know, this is something that uh, I'd like to hear from you. I think it will always depends on guides like me, you know, that tell something uh, very interesting. I, I tell always like a TV series on some uh, channels, you know, that we have, don't to make any advertisement or some good movie, you know, that you see the movie and you, you don't want to go to the restroom, even though you have to, because <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen next. You know? <laughs> yes. If the guide, you know, knows a lot, but he cannot really tell the story. He cannot, he just, just reading, you know, everybody can read what he was Look here on the right-hand side, we have the church built 1859 by the Mr. <laughs> that's, that's easy, you know, but that's yeah. not really guiding, you know. And I, I think a lot of people, they cannot do all the countries, yeah, but they not. want to do it, yeah. you know. At least they want to compare. And those video with virtual tours, it's one of the good things 
you can really do the time, you can really plan your time. If the guide, of course, has more channels and people know where to find that guide, or the company offers some kinds of special tours, you know, like going up the Machu Picchu or flying or just seeing the streets of London or even seeing the streets of London, they are not so famous, you know, just the neighborhood, you know, people will always try to join, you know, also with cooking, with yoga, with Pilates, with Kung Fu, whatever people want to sell, you know, it goes big because a lot of people cannot really travel from one of those. Yeah. You know? and, and, also, and again, the, the idea of cross-border experiences, virtual tourism, that's what it does. Okay. But yes. I, I'm just trying to think more of the collaboration, the future, collab like this next generation of virtual tours that are basically going through a few different countries in one session, like in, in an hour and a half, or let's say a maximum of two hours, you're going to be in two, three, four countries and tell the story yeah, of a certain is, person, it is, for example. It is, it is possible and, and, and interesting, you know, but uh, sometimes when you do many, many countries, it's mm -hmm. like I do here in Vienna with my car, many stops at places. You don't get rid of the feeling, mm -hmm. you know. I, yeah. I, I would say more like a little cross country with half an hour mm -hmm. Vienna, you know, and then I will give tomorrow for Itama uh, at I the see. same time. And he want to do half an hour Israel and talk about the similarity between Vienna and mm. Israel, you know, because I will tell you about the sculpture of musicians and he will say, sorry, we don't have many musicians on the street here, you know, <laughs> but we have other kind of sculptures, you know, and then Itamar next day, next day is the one from Istanbul. And he tells about the difference between Vienna, Inst uh, Israel and Istanbul, you know, and it will be longer, you know, it's like, I don't know if you have this little game uh, most most country has it that uh, you started one sentence, you know, and you keep going on the round, yeah. and everybody do one sentence. A add you know? another I, sentence. I want. I want to. I want to eat. Yeah, I yeah, want yeah. To eat the Add another word. Yeah. You know, and then sometimes you forget the beginning. So when you when you do something like that, people will do remember, you know, where you started in the middle, finish, and then you go around because it has to go back to Vienna. Where can of course go to Israel, go to Istanbul, go to Athens, go to Paris, go to London, and come back to me. You know, so people know sometimes the the, the possibility how it change. You know, day by day. I think it's a it's a it's a it's a great future. You know, for people to do more traveling around the world in a short time. You know? I 100 yeah. agree, yeah. and uh, yeah, I mean, um, I uh, saw one of the voyagers uh, that uh, mentioned that uh, you know this virtual tourism is like a, a magic carpet. You know, yes. <laughs> she feels like it, yeah. It so is, uh, every is, afternoon, yeah. I think she connects and she enjoys. The, yeah. She takes the magic because, carpet to whatever. To whatever. I, I have two kinds of viewers. You know, the viewers that been to Vienna, so mm -hmm. they will never come back. They just want to see how the the, the street, how the places look yeah. like after 10, 15, 20 years, but mm -hmm. they're not planning to come back here, you know, yeah. and I have those that know about Vienna, but never been, and they see how Vienna is nice, and sometimes I have the possibility to show them a good location, a nice content house, and he plays a nice instrument, and I show the music museum, so I make the connection day by day when I do my tours with the viewers, and they tell other people to join me. Oh, you have to see Francis. He went there and there and there, you know. And people follow me because of that, you know. And people always get in touch with me, and that's that's the good thing about it, you know. Yeah. And, no, and, I think and, uh, that's that's like you touched that point again of of you know we we are improving our knowledge of our of cities, etc. Yes. And we can give the people much better experience. Okay, you've been there once, but now yes. just keep in touch with that destination, you know, just uh, follow up. And I did I did I did something that you mentioned it, but just was been I've been been a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a client that wanted to go to from Vienna to Berlin, yeah. and from Berlin to a little Czech uh, city, very beautiful for a special Tamil bus, and then he want to end up in Prague. And then he flew from Prague back home. So I told my viewers, look, I'm going to be on the road one day. I cannot talk to you, but I'm going to show after I bring the car line to the hotel, I'm going to show you Berlin, but I'm not going to show you like a tour guide. I'm going to show through my eyes as yeah. a tourist. Yeah. And then the next day, we're going to go to the Czech village. I'm going to show you that too, through my eyes. And then we're going to go to Prague. And Prague, I woke up four in the morning <laughs> at five o'clock. I had empty Prague with me. Wow. 
beautiful picture. People, of, of course, the Americans didn't, didn't, didn't saw it because it was too late. Too late but yeah. sometimes one of my, my tours always try to record and put it somewhere, you know? Yeah. Shoot the video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I have an allergy, you know? Yes, I know. <laughs> That's okay. time of the year. <laughs> so anyway, okay. That's anyway, great. so, so, so I did this, you know, and people were I had more than 150 people on my Prague tour early in the morning. That's you great. Know? Amazing. It's really great. It's really good. So and I did that, you know, that connection. So just before, like we are wrap, about to wrap it up as the baby is also uh, becoming a little impatient. Yeah. He's probably wants his schnitzel. He heard so He's much about the schnitzel. Jealous, so, yeah. <laughs> what? Sorry? <laughs> what are you going to talk about me? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's, he wants his, schn his oh, Austrian schnitzel now. Ones. Always the so, little ones. Yeah. But, let, you know, is there anything else you want to say to us just before we wrap it up? actually for 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 the viewers always nice to get in touch with some of the guides um for the guides itself it's sorry to say a few don't try to sell them they are very good guides but they always started with hello my name is and on the end goodbye have a nice day and people sometimes ask me on my channel how can i get in touch with this guide from that city because it was a great tour but i have no contact and also on the page the guide has there's no more information it's just yeah. information about the tour but not information not about himself and it's very easy you know you just have to do some three four five times during your tour this is my business card new marketing account. yeah give very it a little easy, touch you know? people call okay people don't call also okay, also fine you know? yeah but it's always good to have it you know and the, the virtual tour i think will be great in the future because there will be sometimes that expensive will go high up Different, yeah, people who don't have the time you know so they say good i'm gonna go nearby during my holidays but on video i'm gonna go to japan i'm gonna go to brazil i'm gonna go to israel i'm gonna see more times to get to know because we we guides you and me and all other colleagues we like some kind of culture teacher and ambassadors correct you know? i talk sometimes not so good things about vienna because it's not really the paradise you know but it's just the little things, you know, so a little bit scam they do with tourists happens everywhere, you know, but people are alert. Some of them say, OK, I know that that trick happens all the time, you know, in many places. We know that. But I don't want to say, oh, I didn't know that. Do tell you tell me I'm going to use that for my next travel, you know, and those people always come back to me because they want to get some more tips. So it's, it's good for us. Yeah. You know? Fantastic. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, we'll have Francis details on the YouTube channel. This thank video you, hopefully you. will appear on uh, your social media, I'm pretty sure. And uh, thanks again for uh, yeah. watching a, a second episode about the virtual tourism industry and uh, guides in the virtual world. Uh, uh, for those who view us, uh, my baby is also saying hi. He was a little yes. impatient uh, here and there, but I hope it was OK. So uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, Thomas. Thanks for that. Bye, baby. Bye. Really soon, Vienna.